Success requires making a hundred small steps go right, one after the other. No slips, no goofs, everyone pitching in. The resounding words of American surgeon, writer and public health researcher Atul Gawande. Gawande's words show that diligence and teamwork are key to success in any venture. But these are attributes that seem to be in short supply as Nigeria seeks agricultural resurgence. The fact that melon, or a goosey as it is called in a local parlance, has remained on the European Union list of banned agricultural produce from Nigeria, the recent three-year ban of beans by the same EU and the current troubles with yam export aptly demonstrates Nigeria's challenge with diligence and teamwork. Nigeria's recent decision to join the yam export market, currently dominated by Ghana, which produces just about 11% of global yam output, was hailed as a step in the right direction. However, not only did Nigeria, responsible for well over 60% of global yam production, make a very late entrance into the yam export market, the first attempt was also very poor especially for off-takers of the first consignment of Nigerian yam in the United Kingdom. Oh, every once in a while, even a farmer gets a chance to look distinguished. Don't be concerned about how I'm dressed or the environment. It's still farmer's market. Uh, this time we're reaching you from the market and not the farms. Now you do recall that only recently Nigeria joined the yam export market and the United Kingdom is one of the destinations of Nigerian yam. And of course, you can already find them on the shelves here in London. Now, how has the whole yam export venture uh, fared? That's what we will be finding out this week on Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market, a program that promotes Nigeria's agricultural prowess identifies the challenges besetting the sector and advocates policies and programs that will help grow Nigeria's agro-economy. Varieties of highly nutritious rice in Abakaliki of Fada, Kano, yet Nigeria wastes billions on rice importation. Cocoa in the southwest, and yet top dollar is spent on imported chocolate and beverages. Fruits rot in Benue, Nasarawa Kogi, yet imported juice line the shops. 82 million hectares of rich arable land, yet no jobs, and food insecurity threatens. Arian wealth is in farming, livestock, hatcheries, fisheries, horticulture. culture, and forestry. It's time to act different. Time to bring Nigerian farmers to the market. Farmers Market, growing Nigeria's agroeconomy. Showing every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. on AIT. On Thursday, September 28, 2017, Nigeria inaugurated a National Export Promotion Committee to support the country's economic diversification as well as work with states and institutions to take ownership of exports from Nigeria. It became clear that uh, in the face of the need to truly support uh, economic diversification, it has become necessary to work um, a lot more in promoting exports. And premise on this, a national committee on export promotion has been constituted to help work alongside the various institutions that will see uh, states truly taking ownership of the process of um, export promotion. Members of this committee are Federal Ministry of um, Agriculture and Rural Development, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Federal Ministry of Transport, Federal Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Federal Minister of Finance, and of course, three governors would uh, also be involved here. We have the governors of Jigawa, Lagos, and Ebonyi State, 
Um, Central Bank will also be uh, represented, the NNPC and the NEXIM. The committee is expected to draw a single plan based on various templates that have been made available to see how to create a single stop shop for accessing information and export promotion and of course getting the right inputs correctly. Uh, the committee will be chaired by the Governor of Jigawa State. Co-chaired. Um, co will be co-chaired co by the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. The committee has its work cut out for it because of the myriad of challenges plaguing exports in Nigeria. Examples are too numerous to count, but the three-year ban on Nigerian beans by European Union and Nigeria's recent entrance into the yam export market stick out like a sore thumb. These and other challenges in the export sector may have prompted the federal government to take more interest in the country's export processes. In February again, the Minister of Agriculture inaugurated the technical committee and said in five months, we want you to flag off Nigeria Yam Export. And today we are here gathered. I don't know what you can say about that. But perhaps some of us will say, maybe this is the change we have been waiting for. The promotion of Nigeria's agricultural, agricultural export. We are here today to flag off the first major assignment of Nigerian yams overseas. May the flow never stop. Amen. May the incomes increase by the day. Amen. May farmers, and consumers, and Nigerians here and abroad to enjoy these exports and may Nigeria continue to live in peace. Amen. Amen. Thursday, 29th of June 2017, Nigeria initiated action that many hoped would change the course of yam production in the country by giving yam farmers access to the international market. The flag of of official export of Nigerian yam to Europe and the United States was done with pomp. Standards must not be compromised. Behind the ceremony hid the many challenges. The T's had not been crossed, neither had the I's been dotted. The result is what farmers market found out in London almost three months later. So the time for you to travel is very, very critical. You cannot allow, it doesn't matter how good the damage is, you cannot, travel, you cannot allow the damage to travel for like um, two months or three months. It's, 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 it's not possible. The best yam will not even survive it. The best, best variety will not survive it. Michael Adedigbe, one of the major off-takers of Nigerian yam in London. Adedigbe's outfit provides Nigeria and African food fresh and processed to the growing African population in London. A patriotic Nigerian businessman who says his desire is to grow the country's agricultural exports. He serves the over one million Nigerians and a huge chunk of almost half a million other African nationals and descendants who live in London. A walk through his shops 
quickly shows the high demand for African foods in the United Kingdom. From fresh agricultural produce to processed ones, the shops are stocked with varieties of vegetables. Pepper, tomato, groundnut, palm oil, dried fish. The list is endless. And of course, the king of crops, yam, crowns it all. But a close look reveals that this is not Nigerian yam. This yam is called puna, a variety grown in Ghana. Despite the fact that Adedikbe ordered the largest chunk of the 72 tons of yam that left Nigeria after the June 29 yam export ceremony, there was no Nigerian yam on its shelves almost three months after when Farmer's Market visited in mid-September. Adedikbe's warehouse contains the 20-ton consignment of yam which arrived in London exactly 11 weeks after the June 29th ceremony in Abuja. The consignment oh, sits yeah, in the warehouse proudly displaying the Nigerian stamp. The reason why the yam sits in the warehouse rather than on the shelves quickly becomes obvious. A peek into any of the parks reveals that the yam had gone bad, expectedly, from the long period before and during transit. So, so the time for you to travel is very, very critical. You cannot allow, it doesn't matter how good the yam is, you cannot, travel, you cannot allow the yam to travel for like um, two months or three months. It's, 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 it's not possible. The best yam will not even survive it. The best, best, best variety will not survive it. Adedikwe says there were already signs that there will be challenges even before the June 29th flag off of yam export. We actually plan to have a, um, um, what you call a trial run. To say, you know what, we're going to have a flag off, but let's have a trial run. So that the flag off will be perfect. Guess what happened? We have so many issues, especially a papa issue. We cannot move a container from Edo to Apa in one week because of the congestion. I mean, how many miles? Less than 10 miles. We cannot move a container from there to that. And what that means is that you cannot actually risk putting yam in a container, a silk container, without guarantee that you will get to the port within eight hours or, I mean, let, I mean, let's say two, three hours. Worst case scenario, we'll travel overnight, eight hours, but for over one week, we couldn't move it. Why? Because of congestion, they said. The roads were bad, there was some issues. I mean, issues that will not make sense to someone like me that operates here. And those are the things that they are saying that happen. Ironically, also in the warehouse is the consignment of Puna Yam a were ordered from Ghana just two weeks earlier. One of the Ghana, Ghana box. I have to see. This is Ghana yam. It's called Puna yam. It's not perfect, is it? Is it? I mean, um, nobody stopped it. But the thing is that the yam that, new yam, what's wrong with it? Travel two weeks. Yeah. So, if anything happens to it, it will not be anything to do with the transit. Yeah, okay. It will be something from the source, from the source. or from the destination. I mean, two weeks, nothing will happen to it. On in transit, nothing will happen to it. But three months, old yam as well. It's, it's, not, it's not possible for you to actually get. I mean, when someone is saying, What do you think? I say, Well, I expect over 50% of the yam to, 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 to be rotten. Because um, we're supposed to do another consignment after this one left. I actually aborted it. Because this has not arrived, it's taken three months. That one has been there for uh, one month at the, uh, the pack house. So it's not taking another two or three months. I said, No. It's not taking another 50, 50, 50, 50. I'd rather lose one million in Nigeria than come and lose three million by the time it gets here. 
Now he has to add the cost of disposing of the rotten yam to the total loss incurred on the entire 20 ton consignment. With this, it becomes easier to see why Ghana, which produces just about 20% of Nigeria's total yam output, remains the world's largest exporter of the tuber. Ghana's international yam trade creates jobs for over 1 million people. The country's export volumes for 2014 stood at $18.8 million, while 2013 export figure was about $20 million. If we decide, for instance, to do what Ghana nearby has done, we'll be engaging well over a million work, work, uh, a workforce of one million, which is the situation in Ghana now. Ghana accounts for 94% of the total yam exports in West Africa, covering markets even in the US, UK and Europe. Between 2005 and 2010, yam production in Ghana contributed about 16% of the country's gross domestic product. The government of Ghana has also developed a national yam development strategy, an yam export strategy aimed at increasing export volumes from the current 35,000 metric tons to as high as 400,000 metric tons with expected revenues of about $5 billion by 2018 ending. Despite Ghana's prowess in the international yam trade, the market is far from saturation. But Nigeria's first attempt to get a bite of the cherry is fraught with hiccups. The huge loss notwithstanding, Adedikwe is optimistic that Nigeria can take over the yam export market if agencies responsible for agricultural export can get their act right. If Nigeria finds a way of reducing export travel time for yam and other perishable produce, and if Nigeria finds the yam variety that can withstand the rigors of travel. It is not the first time that Adidipe is incurring a huge loss in his attempt to encourage export of Nigeria's agricultural produce. His consignment of beans was among those turned back from European ports after the EU extended the ban on importation of dried beans from Nigeria by three years in June 2016. So anything. I think the ban will expire by June. The suspension, the suspension you know, will expire by June. And uh, for any agro product, you know, um, to leave this country, it has to be certified by the corner. That is a global practice. You go to America today, you can't even take anything, not even apple, into the country without quarantine, you know, certifying it. And uh, this is more important now because there are no more petrol dollars. We need agro dollars. We need to, you know, we're in trade deficits with any other country in the world, even Cameroon, even Benin Republic. So we're trying to encourage as much export as possible so that we'll be able to substitute, you know, uh, petrol dollars with agro dollars. While government officials blame middlemen and exporters for the excessive use of harmful pesticides that resulted in the earlier one-year ban, the bureaucratic bottlenecks and the general lack of coordination among government agencies responsible for agricultural exports have been blamed for the three-year extension. The reason they actually suspended Nigerian beans was because at the point where they were writing Nigerian authority, either NAVDAC or uh, Nigerian uh, quarantine, they did not get any re response from them. They wrote over 20 letters. I mean, as a responsible government in the EU, how will you encourage your partner who's bringing contaminated food and you're trying to talk to them and they just ignore you? And that's why they did. Even the way they actually suspended, I mean, the way they, they, stopped, they, 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 the way they actually carry out the suspension, I've never, been, I mean, I've never heard of it before. They had a meeting on a Friday or maybe on a Thursday. By Saturday, the, the suspension was effective. Usually, they would give you about a month or three months. They, they didn't do that. So, as a result of that, 
all the beans they were that had left Nigerian shore and was coming over were stopped. We had two containers that missed by a couple of hours. And they obviously, since the law says that from this time, this day, no beans from Nigeria can come in. We just said to him, no, we're not saying um, we're going to destroy it, we're not going to seize it. We just say it cannot come into the market, let it go back. And that's what we actually um, did. But guess what? Unfortunately for us, when we send the, when do those beans bank, about three containers in total, NAVDAC seized it, the, the, I mean, the customs seized it, passed to NAVDAC, from pass on to quarantine. We pay for the beans to be tested to, to assure them that the beans is good for human consumption. All in all, they didn't do anything. Six months down the line, we had a minister went in there with the um, head of quarantine to go and spend the beans six months after the beans got there. By then, they developed weevil. When they open the beans, they start shouting weevil. What do you expect? The beans closed without any um, treatment. Six months inside a container. So, as I lost about three, three containers of beans. Up to now, we have not had any pronunciation over three, three years now that this is what we've decided to do. The beans is rejected, the beans is accepted. We're just like we're just all in limbo. Another example of Nigeria's seeming lack of seriousness in agricultural export is the fact that the melon or agusi has been banned in Europe for at least 10 years because of the presence of aflatoxin, a carcinogenic substance resulting from mold caused by the high moisture content of exported melon. For almost a decade, nothing has been done to remedy the situation. But by far, the greatest proof that diligence and teamwork are in short supply in Nigeria's bait to ramp up agricultural export is the existence of a law prohibiting export of certain agricultural produce, and yam is one of them. The Export Prohibition Act, Cap E22 of 1999, lists yam, beans, cassava tuber, rice and all products or derivatives and stipulates life imprisonment as penalty for the offence. Section 1 of the Act specifies that notwithstanding anything contained in the Customs Excise Tariff Consolidation Act or any Act or other enactment, including any statutory instrument or order, the goods specified in the schedule of this Act shall be absolutely prohibited from being exported out of Nigeria. According to Section 2, any person who takes, causes to be taken, induces any other person to take or attempts to take out any of the goods specified in the schedule of this Act shall be guilty of an offence and liable on conviction to imprisonment to life. Uh, it's a monumental embarrassment as far as I'm concerned because this is not something you overlook. You have the Attorney General of the Federation, you have Special Assistant and Legal the President, the Ministry of Agriculture, you have legal officers under it, you have a lot of routines of experts that are supposed to deal with this. And before now, you have persons in the custom because it goes beyond them. Because for you to even export, the custom have to deal with it and the responsibility for custom also. You have legal department of custom and we have custom officials, it's not just impounding arms that are in the country than this your work or going to air and rant about the issue of having bulletproof cars being seized from personnel or that people are not supposed to bring up noxious policy of people going to pay for their cars you are bought for 10 15 years ago you should not go and pay but that's it, it goes beyond that now these are brought to the fore the because i'm you know, let me not use certain inappropriate words these are brought to the fore the incapacity of these agencies and persons and offices to do the needful Obama has really said, how should this be overlooked or forgotten by the federal government and this have to be done? There is no doubt that the Export Prohibition Act, Cap E22 of 1999, and the many challenges of agricultural export will command the attention of the just inaugurated National Export Promotion Committee if Nigeria is to make any headway in agricultural export and economic diversification.
That's Farmer's Market for this week. For feedback and sponsorship considerations, email us on info at farmersmarketng.com. Follow us on Twitter at Farmers Market NG and like our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash Farmers Market NG. Farmers Market returns same time, same station next week. Thanks for watching. Varieties of highly nutritious rice in a bakaliki of Fada, Kano. Yet Nigeria wastes billions on rice importation. Poco in the southwest, and yet top dollar is spent on imported chocolate and beverages. Fruits rot in Benue, Nasarawa Kogi, yet imported juice line the shops. 82 million hectares of rich arable land, yet no jobs and food insecurity threatens. Real wealth is in farming, livestock, hatcheries, fisheries, coach culture, and forestry. It's time to act different. Time to bring Nigerian farmers to the market. Farmers Market, growing Nigeria's agroeconomy. Showing every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. on AIT.